Hey, how's everybody doing? Today on the bench, we're going to be reviewing the Fortis Titan Tricopter. When I started in multi rotors, uh, I started with something small, the uh, MQX. Why start with something small? I mean, they're not super impressive. They don't make people go, wow, that's really awesome. They go, that's a nice toy. But you know what? So much of this hobby is information, it's knowledge, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's knowing the right stick movements, it's, you know, having that muscle memory. You have to do a lot of practicing. It's like any discipline. You just have to practice. So why a tricopter? Of all things, a tricopter. You know, there's quads and hexes and octocopters. I even I saw a decacopter once, and it could carry up to a 50-pound payload. And it also carried a, a battery of so big it was like a bomb. I chose a tricopter probably because I saw what David Bindestall did on flight tests uh, with his tricopter. And I said, you know, that looks like a lot of fun. Um, so I did my research and I decided not to scratch build this and I found the Fortis Titan tricopter. I believe it's also now available in a hex where you have motors mounted above and mounted below to carry your heavy, heavier payloads with the same standard tri setup. I really like this frame. This frame is rock solid. I got the 16 inch carbon fiber booms and then they give you an option of doing on your own uh, mounting wooden dowels I use bamboo um, and Gorilla Glue to give them just ultimate rigidity and that's exactly what I found let me tell you something uh, while I was learning on my very first FPV out outing I ran this tricopter into a 15 passenger vans windshield parked full speed uh, boom and then pieces were flying everywhere and I started freaking out. So I went over and started picking up the pieces and realized the only thing that I had broken was the camera mount and a leg. I mean, if you had seen how hard I hit that thing, it's amazing that anything on this entire frame survived. If it would have been a foamy airplane, pfft, good luck. There's not enough glue and tape in the world to put that thing back together. But because this is so well designed, uh, the, the owner, I've talked with the owner at Fortis before, and he's a really nice guy, and he's really smart. Everything on here is breakaway. Everything is mounted with zip ties, or like the arms here are mounted with these rubber retainers. So if you have a less than amiable landing, which if you're new or even not new, you just have them. They happen. The, these rubber retainers can actually pop off and then the arm can move forward or backwards. You know, it's all about energy absorption, which is brilliant. It's physics. And another thing I really like about this that you just can't find on a quad and you just, you know, there aren't many. I can't say there aren't any. There aren't many quads that fold. Um, but these, you pop off a rubber retainer, let's put it back on, you pop it off and you fold the arms back. I mean, look at this, the space that you save. I can put all this in my flight box. I can put all my equipment, all my batteries, and my tricopter in my flight box. Which, you know, if you're into flying planes, you know that a plane takes up some serious space. But that's something I really like. Those rubber retainers are cheap. You can buy them at Fortis, and you could even DIY it yourself if you want. Um, I've got this set up with the uh, the Fat Shark Attitude. Um, I, I'm using a Fat Shark board camera, which I really like. Um, I, I'm kind of amazed by the clarity through this camera. Right now, I'm recording with a Mobius because I'm still learning. I have a GoPro. And I'm still just not ready to throw my GoPro on there yet. Yes, not. Problem with filming with a Mobius. Um, if, if you're new and you're just trying to get into this and you say, you know, I want, I want to do some filming. You know, you can use that pen camera 
and the video is pretty grainy. It looks like how it does through your board camera. This takes HD video at 30 frames per, section, per second. That's 1080p at 30 frames per second. The only problem I have with this, by the way, this camera was on the tricopter when I smashed it into the van. And, ba -ba, I mean, you can't really, it, like, scuff the outside a little bit, and it popped the SD card out, but, sweet. The only problem I'm finding with it is it's more susceptible to vibrations, more susceptible to jello. And I, I did some uh, experimenting. Uh, this is gel shoe insert, and this was a piece of, of soft foam that I got when I ordered something. And that has actually worked really well. Without it, there was a ton of jello, and now there's only a little bit of jello. Um, I'm using the Sunny Sky motors, and I love them. I'm gonna replace the motors on my quad with Sunny Skies, because those DJI motors are just not, they're not as smooth as these Sunny Skies. Uh, 30 amp DYS ESCs tuned for multi rotors. Um, I'm on my second board controller. Uh, flight controller. I originally started with a Multiwii 328P and guys I'm gonna tell you since I'm a noob I'm pretty new to this I just don't know a lot about programming it. I, I tore my hair out. I asked a thousand questions on a thousand forums and get for answers. I, I just couldn't figure out how to set the fail safe on my Aurora 9. I've been flying with the Aurora 9 my high tech and I'm gonna tell you I love this radio. I've read some bad reviews about it, but I love this radio for multi-rotors. I don't so much like it for my airplanes. I really like it for my multi-rotors though. Mainly because it's got a ratcheting throttle system. I don't know if you can hear that or not. It ratchets. I do not like that for my planes. I like it to be smooth. But for the multi-rotor, uh, when you have your goggles on, it's really helpful instead of taking a peek at your controller it's really helpful to feel acceleration deceleration you feel it with the clicks of the ratchet and that is really actually i found it to be very helpful it's extrasensory it, you can feel it in your fingers you don't have to think about it am i accelerating or decelerating when you want to just get it to that perfect place for what I do is landscape FPV, landscape photography. Um, and the Aurora 9 is, if you know, if you know anything about this, are too easy to program. They, they're, they spoil me. And when I pick up my DX6 or anything else, I'm like, man, this is not my Aurora. It's so much easier to program. Now I'm flying, even though it's not recommended on the website, I'm actually flying with 5,000 milliamp, three cell, 30 C batteries. And I'm amazed, you know, I, I get a good solid uh, about seven minutes with all my FPV gear. Um, probably a little longer, but I don't want to push it too hard. Motors come down warm, but not hot. And the same setup for motors, DJI F450, motors come down hot with this battery. So it's got to be these Sunny Sky motors, just really good really nice let me see oh yeah i forgot to tell you so i started with that multi-wii 328p and i just couldn't figure it out so i went with the kk2 2.1.5.18 2 yellow b12 you know there's like 18 numbers after that uh i've got the hard case version which i had to order from like tunisia or somewhere like that malaysia and I actually like it. It's got an external LCD for programming. I, I, I really like it. It's not super stable. It's not like my NASA M on my quad. Um, and it's not even as stable as I've heard the 328P is. But as the video you're gonna see, it's pretty stable. Uh, it, in, in my self-level settings, which by the way, with the KK2, you have to tune everything. You have to go through all of your PID settings. My NASA pulled it out of the box, threw it in my quad. It flew out of the box. Great. The KK2, it's a little bit different. You have to tune everything. And after you get it tuned, yeah, it, it flies satisfactorily. That's the word, satisfactorily. Not great, but satisfactorily. A tricopter is really great if you are following another plane around the flying field. 
um, you know, or you're doing uh, FPV where you're doing a lot of moving uh, momentum, this just is real smooth. The yaw movement, um, the way that you, you uh, control your rudder, your yaw, is by this, this uh, there's a servo set up to tilt the, the tail motor. And so your movements, it sweeps the back end around. Um, and I just find it to be really fluid. It looks real smooth and real natural. Sometimes with a quad, you can get real kind of square turns. And, uh, you know, once again, some of you out there, you rock at flying. And I'm, I'm still getting into this. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of that is muscle memory. I still need to work on that. But I just find that this tri moves so smoothly and so natural, uh, and I really like that. So this is a great setup if you're lo if you're looking for FPV where you're moving, uh, where you're not necessarily doing you know real slow stable shots where you'd need a quad or a hex or an oct a copter. You know this is something where you're moving, and uh, I I found this to be a great setup, and I I'm just really really enjoying it. It's very stable. Um, because of the, uh, you know, the reach here with those 16-inch booms. I believe they also sell, like, it's 12 or 14-inch booms as well. And I was watching a guy do a lot of acro with it, and it's sweet. Someday, yeah, I'm going to do that too. When I get better. And don't suck so bad. And that's why I like this frame. Because my less-than-great landings have yielded satisfactory results. You know, I... I had my battery die, and I was up probably about 200 feet, and my battery died. And so it's just chugging. I have full throttle, and it's chugging. It's coming down, and it hit the ground so hard and bounced. And I, oh, no, this is bad. And it didn't break anything. I was amazed. It, it didn't. It, it, all three of the landing gear popped off. All the zip ties broke. Then that's it. Didn't break any props even. I was so amazed. Uh, it was That was pretty sweet. So if you're looking to get into multi-copters and you've already started off with something small and you're getting the hang of it, why not the Fortis Titan Tricopter? It's real stable. Uh, it flies easily as with everything, as with every new discipline and new area of this hobby that you pick up. You, you're going to have a learning curve and I have had a learning curve with this, but with good results. Man, every time I bash this thing into the ground, arms bend back, all you got to do is push the arms back, put the rubber retainer back on, or put some zip ties on. It's a great setup. So, maybe you should think about the, uh, the Fortis Titan. It's built to last. Thanks for watching the video. I do have a question for anybody out there who's got the knowledge. I really would like to learn how to program that 328P. If you know how to set up the failsafe on that multi-way 328P on an Aurora 9, please message me. And if, you, if you've been flying multi-orders for a long time and you have some advice for me since I'm, I'm a noob, I'm new to this, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching.